Why did I never get a survey, first of all? Because I haven't ever... There was no need. We didn't really date, did we? No, well, we did date. We did date. We went a few dates, but you were just so eager. You know, you we didn't need to give you any feedback. I was eager. It's not you on the first date. You were having, I was eager. You, babe, you were an eager need beaver. I remind you of the time you dropped me home? <laughs> oh, yeah, when I tried to come in, you were having absolutely none For of like it. For like a full hour. And yeah, but I'd already knocked you in before. I couldn't understand. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Joe Haskell and you are listening to Couples Quarantine episode 9. I'm joined by my sexy fuck wife. <laughs> no? Not buying that intro? You told me earlier that I smelled like cabbage. You do like smell like cabbage. I don't. I you had do. a shower, I put perfume on, I'm wearing but moisturiser. Nice. Yeah, you do, but there is always a faint odour of cabbage because you've got a high veg diet. That's just not accurate at all. I don't even eat cruciferous veg. Oh, good luck with saying that word again. Um, I want to first of all thank all the amazing feedback we're getting in Couples Quarantine because it's just you and me this week again. But we've had some amazing guests on. Jamie Lang and Sophie Habu have been on. Paul Doran Jones, my they best friend, hot. and Zoe Hardman, who's an also absolute hero. Hot. Both hot. Um, they came on and gave us advice on... Uh, you know, re- relationships in terms of having kids, dating when you've got kids. So I think hopefully that's ho- helped a lot of people. Yeah. Um, we're getting loads of your emails in, which we really appreciate. Um, We've got some celebrity fans. We have got some celebrity fans. We've got um, Tom Wood, a uh, former teammate of mine, who Chloe's got a real crush on. Who can't stop smiling <laughs> about him. He messaged me and he was like... Um, Oh, I'm loving couples quarantine, by the way. It's really funny. And I was, <laughs> I told James, I was like, I love all the photos of you topless <laughs> making wooden tables, but I won't say that because I'm married and it's highly... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but Chloe's got a real thing about him because if you follow Tom Wood on Instagram, he's a real wilderness man. He's everything I should be, but I'm not. You know, bearded, powerful... Well, actually, I'm bearded and powerful, but really bad at DIY. I'm really bad at DIY. He's like, if there was an Armageddon... I'm going around to his house. Oh my god, the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Everyone goes to Tom Wood's house. He will have the artillery, he will have the bunker handmade with his top off. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. So thank you, so Tom Wood, for listening. Really appreciate that. Um, um speaking of bearded. Oh yes. We've actually I've just started working with a company that's giving me my very own beer pump thing, perfect draft for Oktoberfest. And uh, it's now beer o'clock every single moment of the day. Not for me, I don't really like beer, but well, I mean that. it's quite it's quite a novelty today. So it is I'll have quite a we've had that. Um, I feel like beer I don't understand how boys, especially rugby mm. boys, will go on a social and drink like twenty pints in a night. They're absolute fucking heroes. But doesn't yeah. I will have one like half pint and I yeah. feel full and foamy and furry inside my mouth and I just don't understand how you guys can do it all night and like i burp a lot when i drink there yeah that's so. super attractive really selling yourself on here um i tell you what we had just going off pete well first of all we can drink drink beer because we love it and we're absolute men and we're manly men and that's what manly men do do you really love it yeah, I do actually. Yeah, but I quite like alcohol, don't I? I'm a big fan of a martini. You're, you're not a big, you know. You're not. You like. You do actually like the taste of alcohol. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, but also, we don't have, seem to have offended many people at the moment, which is quite good because on episode nine, we we're sort of waiting for someone to go completely mad. We don't think we have a Daily Mail story yet. I would say for the last, the last. Uh, uh, couples one we did without a guest yes. we were arguing so so we're going to start this week's show well and it is a show by the way um we put out on our our, our instagram please give it a follow um at couples quarantine pod because we need some more followers on there we asked you all a question we said we want to hear your dating app funny slash horror stories now we're a bit concerned by some of the things we got because we can't even read them out and if i can't read them out how rank and bad must they be and if that's an absolute demographic of our fan group, I really think we've got off on the wrong foot and maybe we should just can this before we've even started. Because... I would say one in four are readable, outable. And we got, let me see, about... We got about 80. Why okay. We we're sent a survey by a girl after a few, a few months after a date, which is pretty interesting. I actually had a friend of mine, Tom Reese, a.k.a. Horse, who used to do that. He used to go on a date with a girl and then after the date would send her a survey on things like... Um, you know, appearance, uh, kissing technique, um, humour, banter, um, all but like, quite light-hearted. And actually, I got into doing that myself. I thought it was really funny. It was a nice little icebreaker. Um, it was quite good, actually. And, you, and then what they do is they would then survey you back. So it was quite nice. It wasn't just a, a you know, a survey, you know, sharp face. <laughs> I really liked it because, you know, it was a good way as well of letting them know that maybe the kissing wasn't up to scratch or maybe they need to do a little bit more next time. And, you know, but it was fun. It was fun and friendly. I think it's not a bad idea. I think it's, how do you follow up on a date sometimes? Like, Oh, a bit awkward of a message. I think sending a funny survey, not like you looked hanging, go and sort your whole setup out. That's not good. But going, 
you know, I like those fruity shoes and you were an unbelievable kisser. Atmosphere of your date choice was pretty poor. Um, you know, might I suggest paintballing next time or something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more okay. you look. I have two questions. Yes. Why did I never get a survey, first of all? Because... I haven't ever, there was no need. We didn't really date, did we? No, well, we did date, we did date, we went a few dates, but you were just so eager, you know, you, you didn't need to give you any feedback. I was eager. I told you on the first date, you were having, I was eager. you crave, you were an eager Need beaver. I remind you of that time you dropped me home? <laughs> oh yeah, when I wanted to try to come in, you were having absolutely none For of like it. For like a full hour and yeah, I'd already knocked you in before, I couldn't understand. It was only because you didn't want really, to, you know, I don't know why you didn't. I eager beaver, well. what else happened? Who was eager? Okay, I was a little bit <laughs> eager, you know, you're fit, what can I say? Um... So that was, yeah, so that, I do, I do think the surveys work. What was that, what would you think if you got a survey? Okay, well, I was going to say, um, if you're not interested in dating that person again, it's probably a really good way to get some data and some feedback to work with. If Always you, need data. If you are interested, okay, what I was going to say initially before hearing your story was if, if I was interested in dating the person again, that would probably be like absolute red flag mental case city. But actually, if you're doing it in like a flirty, jovial way, yeah. fine. So it depends. If it's not a PDF of where they went wrong. And it, like can be full, it can be serious if you're done with the yeah, person. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't go, you know, you've got massive amounts of cellulite, got a small moustache, your breast smell cat, cat food, and <laughs> you kiss like you've never kissed before. You would, you'd feed it in, you'd, la you'd layer it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fine. So. Survey says, if yeah. it's jovial, do it. It's a flirty, cute thing. If it's serious, only do it if you're not yeah. into the person, right? Yeah, fine. Yeah, but yeah, but even then, don't you know? Don't crush anyone's confidence. Here. Don't go too hard. Can I also say something controversial that yeah. I, coming from a woman? Yes. Which I am. Are you? Which I know is really. Sometimes it's hard to know whether you're know, a it woman is. or egg. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> that's my husband loves me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say something, and I don't. It, for some reason, it seems more flirty if it were coming from a man, and more psycho if it were coming from a woman. Which only does all that. All that sentence reaffirm does. stereotypes. No, not reaffirm stereotypes. Is it proves how much we've been brainwashed into thinking yeah. like men are like the fun, jokey ones, and women, yeah. women are the psychos. Yeah, I mean that is true though. I don't, look. I, I hate to say it, but yeah, as a girl, I think I'd be. I, that would be probably a really bad idea as a guy it would probably be funny yeah, but only if it only if the questions were written in, in a certain way my friend max has this um theory who and he goes max? you know who max I know, is lenny's dad i know i know um lenny's a dog by the way yeah <laughs> lenny who got really big like overnight anyway um he always says that it's funny he his opinion is that if people come from money or they they have money and they're like slightly insane people call them eccentric but if people don't people just call them mad and yes. he's, it really annoys him yeah no no what you mean and is if, if they come from money and they're mad they're eccentric yeah. if they're poor they're just mental if well yeah I mean I wouldn't use that phrasing but yeah <laughs> but <laughs> okay we'll get beat around the bush but, you say potato I say potato but it but, really really know. annoys him and I really agree with it and I think it's the same with men and women I think if women do things often it can be perceived as mental and if men do things often it can be perceived as like lols <laughs> yeah we have had the lad, lad culture chats what's your next one <laughs> <laughs> Dismissive. Yeah. Um, this is something James would do, which is why I put a star on it. I turned up to the first date and she'd brought her parents with her. <laughs> oh, punchy. Punchy choice. But, you know, once you're in, I mean, you invited me round for my first meeting with your folks, Richard and Doobie, offered a TV on Boxing Day with your whole family. Richard I walked and in, Doobie. Richard and Doobie. <laughs> it was the headline when I got photographed smoking a bong. Great day for me. Bad day for my parents. Bad day for your parents. <laughs> Unless they were selling it to you, then probably a good day. Um, but I... Uh, I, what? I don't know. We've had like half a glass of beer and both of us feel really weird. Don't... I'm sweet, babe. You're, you're, you're a bit all over the place. Um, I think... Yeah, and you, you, on Boxing Day, I went straight and met the whole family. And I walked in and said, the whole place yeah, didn't quiet. bring <laughs> them on a date. No, you okay, knowingly fine. were invited to and came over to my parents' house. Uh, and we, don't, we couldn't get any feedback as to how that date went, but I can't imagine it went that well. Yeah, well, so James used to do this thing where, like, when sometimes we would have, um, not sometimes, they would have, obviously, boys-only rugby socials, and then they would have, like, socials for the girls to come as well, which I'm sure they hated, but we loved. Um, and James would often bring his parents. <laughs> And both the players and the partners would be like, why are James's mum and dad at the social? And I'd be like, I don't know, it's just James. Because they're actually heroes, Steve. They were, they were brilliant, they can keep um, up. What's next? Um, we met in a bar, he was already drunk and had catfish me and then stole my hairbrush. <laughs> okay, just a few things here. 
Men at bar, he was already drunk. That's something I would do. Look, I feel like... Maybe he's nervous. Yeah, I feel like you have to drink on a first date or it's just impossible to get through. Although, actually, you can talk about that in a minute because I know that you would often have, like, one-night stands completely sober. (laughs) And when you told me that, I was like, how? I would be like, how did you do that? And you were like, oh, it's, like, more fun in the beginning. In the end, it got really boring because the girl was always drunk. Oh, that sounds really bad. (laughs) Oh, that sounds... I don't mean, like, drunk, drunk. I mean, like, obviously, you drink on a first date because you're trying to... What's it called? Dutch courage. Anyway had catfished me, hugely unattractive for men to do this. Men, we do not care as much as you do about how the opposite sex looks. Could, could so. you actually submit your catfish stories? Because I think we should do an episode on catfishing. It's cqquestions um, at jameshaskell.org. It's cqquestions at jameshaskell.org. I'd love to hear catfish stories. Because obviously there was that fantastic programme about catfishing and they were all... It was so weird. Can I tell you? Yeah. Did you watch that series? Yeah, some of So it, you yeah. know there's two guys. Yeah. There's the guy with the brown brunette. What's he called? I can't remember the exact names. And yeah. then there's Max, the guy with the silver yeah. hair. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was obsessed with him. Like I would like, like have sex dreams about him every night. But I don't really know why, because he's not really my type. Yeah. I just loved him. Mm. Lovely. Great to share that. That was before yeah. I met you. Maybe I was, cause I was going through a breakup, so I like had transcendence. Yeah, or was it, was it called transcendence, or was it transference? Oh, yeah. Trans- <laughs> transcendence is something very different, babe. <laughs> it's the beer talking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, this God. episode's already a write-off. I know, I love it. Um, and then he stole my hairbrush. That's very odd. But lads do sometimes take trophies. I've known lads take trophies, pair of knickers and stuff like that after doing knickers, a Knickers, but a hairbrush. Well, I don't know why you take the trophy, because, you know, like knickers, hairbrush. <laughs> There's a celebrity who I won't mention who is known for taking uh polaroids consented consented yes. polaroids of girls that he shagged and puts them in a coffee table book yes i've seen a book though i've seen a book by just a regular bloke who put a coffee table book together of you know and it's just a photo they're not rude photos i thought it'd be quite funny if i, I mean no, i didn't I actually, relate I it. quite it, good if you had that just to relive some of the dreams or just see where you at I think it. Well, I don't know about for the reasoning. Relive some of your oh, no. to see where you're at. <laughs> Sorry, Although no, we know I... that we know that you keep stuff like that because we found it by we. Yeah, I mean me. I don't think we have. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, I think it's a very weird thing to do. But I think you're right in that. You know that there, there are those art pieces of like found shopping lists yeah. from like around the world. Like in a way, I kind of get what because I had saying. a mate who used to keep a diary. Until he got married and he had to burn it. And if he listens to this, he'll know exactly who he is. Um, and he, he kept a diary of like just short paragraph about what happened with each girl. Yeah, I quite like that. Like, I would buy that and as, was, as a like, stocking yeah, filler it was, book. Yeah, it was a bit graphic in parts. Maybe that could be your second um, book. Book. What, me? But I can't remember anyone about you, apart from you. Shut up, James. If, in case <laughs> anyone is looking, it's seen out the beer. Oh, you've had, you've had half a, you haven't had a couple of sips of <laughs> beer. Sips. Grow up. <laughs> You're absolutely fanning. Um, in case anyone is wondering what's happened to my finger, I moved the lamp and slit it open. So yeah, not just... great. Um, right, any a couple more, and then we'll move yeah. on to some some topics. I had a Tinder date back in January 14. Fast forward to today, and we've been married for 2.5 years. Horror, <laughs> mate. I know exactly what you mean. I went out with this treacle for a little bit, and I ended up <laughs> been with her for six years. I don't know how that happened. I was an absolute boy about town, doing bits, and then. You just get, you just get, when you meet the one, you meet the one. And you just can't, you know, and then you end up trying to get a scathing eyes. Scathing eyes. You've regretted it ever since. No, I haven't regretted it. Of course you haven't, because who would shut up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last one. Um, I was dating two girls who ended up becoming friends and have chosen each other over me. Shut up. Well, I feel, feel like if you told them both that you were exclusive or you weren't dating other people, then I'm team them. If you told them that you would still, that you weren't exclusive yet, then that's pretty Yeah, deep. but sh- I mean, surely there should have been some sort of three ball going on at some point. Of some course that's where your brain goes. Mine well, too, to be fair. I just think you should probably, you know, I would say, listen, girls, that's not a problem. You know, I'm really, oh, it's really hard emotionally, but can I just get in for, for just an hour of action? Just because it make things, we all feel a bit better. Do you have any fun, fun threesome stories to share with the group? I have no. <laughs> I've never had, I've never been involved in that. <laughs> you couldn't even <laughs> say the first one without laughing. I have never, I don't, we don't talk, don't you fucking start talking about any of that stuff. I've anyway. never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Pinocchio, fucking hell. <laughs> right. Uh, right, last, I'll read the last one. Oh, okay, oh, fine. Oh, you read it. Yeah, you read it. Okay. With your finger. First date, drunk, slept with a chap, and then... <laughs> 
First day drunk, slept with the chap, and he strangled me. No prior consultation, bit much. That is a, that is yeah, interesting, actually. Yeah, that's before you do shit that, like Yeah, that. that is interesting, because obviously, you know, after um, uh, Fifty Shades, there's been, you know, there's been an upsurge of kind of people getting into fetish, all that kind of, you know, you know, Anne Summers doing a range, everyone's doing a range of these kind of, you know, masks and whips and bits and pieces. And, you know, I think women quite... I'm going to caveat this. I think women like that literature because they like the idea of a powerful man taking charge, being owned a little bit in in, in a consensual way. But you can't go around strangling a bird willy nilly. You can feel it out, but you can't just go in for the. Do you fucking like that? <laughs> I don't. Willy nilly. Yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> you sort of, you can ease into that. You know, just casually like layer the hand round. No, 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 no. If it look, unless you are really like dating or yeah. in a relationship with that person. Where you can either do it, like feel it out, yeah. or ask. Yeah. You, there's no other option but to ask. Do yeah, you but like th- it? If yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I think that you know, in the throes of passion, you know, you can sort of feel things out gently and just see, you know, because normally, you know, if you go sometimes, if you, back in the day, a friend of mine told me about this. If you used to go to the old back door, they'll you know that get hand away. If you went for something, you, you, you know, they feel quite good at no, saying that. Uh, yeah. It's only if you force it where it's wrong. I would say, like, okay, so I would, I would think. If you if you literally just have just slept with this person yeah. like that night or once or a few yeah. times, you you really need permission. If you're like fully like into a sexual relationship, then you can feel it out. But also like just get understand that some women are going to say no. Like yes, it might it might spark something awful for them, and some women are going to absolutely yeah. love it. I always got it wrong because I used to strangle them after we'd had sex later. on. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more like you. Um, yeah, but some, sure. some women are going to love it. Me no. and my best friend like it, but uh, then our two other friends yeah. are like, if a guy even touched my yeah. neck in that manner, yeah. while we, I would punch him in the face. Yeah, you can't You can't just go and put opposing yourself on on sort of woman like that. First date is a bit punchy, and, I'm, and I just meant that. <laughs> you can't just go straight for, you know, that's, the yeah, it's a bit much. You've got, you got to ask and get permission. I just meant there's ways and means of easing. Easy around, you know. Just remember, guys, no means no. Joy, it fucking hundred percent means no. <laughs> um, That's it. We'll, we'll... Uh, no, look, uh, Tinder horror stories. Seeing my ex on there often. Yeah, babe. I like. Uh, yeah, I remember when I've had I've dated a couple of guys in the public eye, and having to read about them in their new relationships afterwards was a fucking punchy. Yeah, it was not fun, and you've had experience with that. You talk about that in your book. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've got burnt a few times in yeah. the media. Um, I would just. I, can't you? Can you block people? On, I don't have. I've never been on a dating app, but can you block people on it? Can't you just block your exes? No, I don't know. I don't know. I, well, I, you can. Cause I went on, I'm, I've only been on one dating app once. Plenty of fish for a day. And did you get plenty of fish? <laughs> did you catch? I didn't it? get plenty of fish. I went on, did a job, and then ran away. And I was like, and then one. Yeah. So the app didn't live up to its name. No, it wasn't plenty just of fish. fish. There was one small fish. Um, and How small? <laughs> Well, not like that, that small. It wasn't like it. I was a jealous when you with tiny people because I'm quite a unit. Pardon? Y- y- unit. <laughs> Who's a unit? Me. Maybe <laughs> you're absolutely not. Um, right. So, what's the topic of so that? We have put that to rest. Thank you very much for sending your horror stories. We will ask you some more questions, please. The really weird, kind of insane stuff. Can we just keep to one side because we won't read it out and it's a bit rank and I don't, kind of worries me that people think like that. We have a lot of very cerebral and articulate listeners, and we know that because of the emails we get. But um, some of the Instagram um, comments were slightly terrifying. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> yeah. and we would never read them out. Um, is it just you and Doris drunk on your lads' weekend? <laughs> yeah. I just come back from last weekend. Could. That was good fun. That was good fun. Yeah, so it wasn't a lads' weekend because loads of couples showed up and I wasn't invited because I was told it was a lads' weekend. So that was yeah. cool. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay, so we'll move swiftly on from that conversation. Beer sometimes smells like marijuana. I wouldn't know what that smells like. Mm. I would, because I was on the front page <laughs> yes, of the tabloid smoking a bomb. Yes, you were. And may I remind you, it was a good day for me. <laughs> it was a great day for the you. The best thing about it is that I'm like crying laughing as well. <laughs> God. Hi guys, I'm a big fan of both of you and thank you so much for your podcast podcasts. I'm really enjoying them at the moment as I drive to work as a radiographer in the NHS. Oh, good girl. Um... First of all, I'd love to thank thank Chloe for getting me into weightlifting seven years ago when I had no idea of it. I discovered her Weights for Women app, old school. Uh, Now I train six days a week. I'm a power lifter and I absolutely love it. Oh, that makes me feel so good. My mission in life is to get women lifting weights. Anyway, 
I had a date about a year ago that really got me thinking about the type of guy that I want to be with. I had about three dates with this particular guy who looked quite similar to you, James. Oi, oi, wink face. Sorry, Chloe. It's okay, babe. (laughs) Oi, she's not made of wood, though, is she, babe? Let's be honest. I mean, I'd like to be made of Tom Wood. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to kill you. Yeah, well, don't make stupid comments. Think about that strangling strangling thing off uh, next to it. There'll just be a cardboard cutout. Oh, well, is the subject open to choice? What? 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 Huh? At first, things seemed to go really well and we were getting on like a house on fire. Isn't that always the way? Yeah. Having good discussions about things as well as a good attraction to each other. It wasn't until he basically started saying that I needed to work a lot less and get out a lot more. I was taken aback at first. I'm not a fucking hermit, but he knew that I was saving up for a house at the time. So I did find it quite offensive. I'm only 26. I realised that him and I had similar paid jobs and now I look back at the situation, I think that actually he was just threatened by me and how hard I was working to become successful in my career and pursue my dream of becoming a property developer. Safe to say I didn't date him again. I personally would rather be with someone who encourages me in life like my parents have always done with each other. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on this subject with regards to salary snobbery. It's hard for me. And how important you think money and career is in a relationship. Thank you, Harriet. I would say, look, I've always pushed you to be the most successful version of yourself. Mm -hmm. I think um, this is a massive one for me in relationships. And, and, you know, I know for some men it's, it's not an issue and they really think it's important for them. For you know them to be the number one provider, I think unless you've got kids, I think both parties need to work. I think that women, uh, everyone in life, especially men and women, they need a purpose, they need a direction, they need something that they, that, that, that they own themselves. I think that if you end up having kids, yes, they take a priority, but even then, you need to have something that you can focus on and, and do that is completely yours, away from your husband, away from your kids, away from your wife, and away from your kids. And <laughs> I think the most important thing is it, it, by you working. Uh, you, you've got it gives you mental balance it gives you your own income you feel successful um, and I would always always back you to do that I think anyone who criticizes you for doing work is wrong I think there's always a work-life balance that needs to be had and you always have to prioritize the re- you know the relationship we talked last week with Zoe and Paul about when you have kids you still need to pay attention to your partner you still yeah. need to pay attention to your to your wife and you know, I would avoid people who, who tell you not to work. I know there's some old school men that are like, no wife of mine will work. I think you're fucking idiots and I think you're making your own bed because hypothetically, if you have the kids, when you get home from work, all your wife's been wondering about what you've been doing all day. She's been with the kids all day, being an amazing mum. You come in the door, she's going to dump the kids on you because she's going to want a break. And if things aren't going well with the kids and things aren't going well with her, with you, with the husband, that's all she's got in her life. So she'll have a disappointment. I think it's really important that... You know, for example, if my relationship was not going well with you and my rugby wasn't going well, but I had other business outside, it still meant I had positives in my life. You need stuff, you need direction and diversity in life to, to allow balance. So uh, the upshot is the guy sounded like a peen ass. Yeah, I think, um, first of all, I second everything James said. I think there are some people out there who really need to, who are slightly more party people and who really need that in a partner, um, whether they're just dating someone or if they're in a relationship. And that's completely fine. And if you're much more career focused and you know you wanna buy a house and you're obviously good with money, then that relationship probably won't work. Or to be fair, to play devil's advocate, it could work more because there's a nice balance of like, you know, that person makes me go out and have fun and enjoy life. And then I make them like, strap in and save for a house and da 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 it could go either way um but yeah obviously you guys just weren't compatible um the second thing i would say is i agree i think unless there are children involved um pregnancy and and young children especially you know in infancy um this they need taken care of and it can be full a full-time job it is a full-time job and if you don't have the money to hire someone to do it then one of the parents not necessarily the woman but one of the parents has to take on that role um aside from that i agree with james i think if if there aren't kids involved then you know working and having a good work ethic is part of having like a healthy mind and a healthy life and a healthy respect for for life and society and the way things are and if somebody isn't down for that then yeah for me personally i wouldn't be attracted to that man um because i also think i also think there's, you know, there's three things in life you can control i've told you before you can control how you treat your body we only get one of them when mm-hmm. it breaks and when it is it's done you know they say health is wealth this current climate has shown that second thing is how you treat other people you know you, you've got a choice how you treat other people and the third thing that you can control is, is how hard you work and how you develop yourself as a person 
And those are the only guarantees in life. And I think that if you are neglecting any one of those areas, you're cheating yourself out and making most of your life. And I think while relationships are important, having your own individual stuff, your own individual balance will actually make you a, make you a better a better partner and couple. And you should always support you. And I was never intimidated. I want you to be 100 times more successful than me. I want you to earn a fuck bucket load more money than me because... I want you to be successful. I'm not intimidated by it. Now, as long as I've got a job and I can earn every now and then, I could pay for stuff for you. I could treat you. That's all that matters to me. And you know, you're very much. We, we go fifty fifty on everything. Yeah. Um, which is you know, which is very unique. I think it, it is good for our relationship that we are really independent with work and with money, and we go fifty fifty right down the line. But I think now we've been married for nearly a, oh two years. Oh my god, nearly said nearly a year. There's been a shift in my mindset since since we got married where there is an element of me that James and I, James has his own house um, in the Midlands where he retired from rugby um, and I have my own like one bed flat in London. And now that we're married and, you know, we're very much, uh, have been living together for about five years, I kind of am I'm ready to like take that next step, which I know people find weird because we've been married for nearly two years, but I'm ready to take that next step and kind of financially come together yeah. and buy a property together. Now, I want to be very clear, in my head, it should be buy a property together, have a joint account in which we pay for our mortgage, we pay bills, we pay for holidays, we pay for food, that kind of thing. But I would still want, separate to that, me to have my own account, you to have your own account, where, you know, say if you go on another boys' weekend, which yeah. I'm sure is open then. De- definitely coming in um, account, I'll check the video. Oh, where's my weekend? I'll take you away for a weekend. I'll send you away for a weekend. <laughs> um... Uh, where you could dip into that account because yeah. I don't want you spending my like I work no, bloody no. hard and I don't want to pay for your you know crazy. You do operate the policy. Weekend. What's yours is yours. What's mine is yours. No, but it's same for me. So if I if I so I went out to France to see my parents, I yeah. play, paid for my airplane ticket, yeah. I paid for everything, and I wouldn't expect you no, to of contribute course not. to that. Now I think there is an old school, well not even old school. There's just an accepted school of thought that like once you're married, everything is split fifty fifty, and I love that because I think it's important and romantic. But I think until kids come into the picture. I don't see why things should be fifty. I agree. I don't. I think. Look, you know, obviously there's different situations and people have different things. But I think that if you come into something with a marriage, you know, that you should retain your own independence in certain aspects. But you should share. You know, I think it's a great joining of a couple together, and people do have different situations. But you know, we've talked about wanting to do it. You know, the next stage for a while, but. Yeah. You know, I want to keep earning my stuff. I want to keep earning your stuff. But you know, push comes to shove, we would look after each other at each time, at, at both times. But we know lots of people, lots of couples where the part, one partner doesn't do anything, and I just don't see it as a great well, recipe. I know a lot of rugby players who have said to their girlfriends and wives, "I do not want you to work. Yeah. I want you to have." our children and raise our children because you're the mother and I will take care of that now again there's a part of me that loves that because it's like I want you to raise my children I p- I picked you and I want that um and also it's really like a team teamwork yeah. and I think I think it's quite romantic in a way but then there's a new age feminist part of me which hates it because I'm like well I could easily turn around to you and be like no we, we, I will have our children you will take care yeah. of the children and I will work and that has to be an open-ended discussion I think I agree Hi guys, firstly, you guys are great, hilarious uh, and fun together, thank you. Uh, James, the Good, the Bad and the podcast is awesome as well. Question for you to cover. Me and the lads were playing golf at the weekend and we were talking about lack of sex, especially since marriage, kids, etc. Well, you need to firstly watch, listen to our last podcast, Mm -hmm. episode 8 with Paul Doran Jones and the lovely Zoe Hardman. Uh, The question was, what do you think is an acceptable level during during the week? And question two, part two, is do you think reduction in sex, especially for males, has an impact on mental health? We were saying that surely there is a link between male suicide and this transitional change in men's lives. <laughs> Fuck! I mean, lads, that is a hell of a it's link. A you put that together. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, women go on about their bodies and hormones. However, do you think that women understand or try to understand men, especially testosterone? Do they understand the urge to have sex in males? We came to the conclusion that men try to understand women but can't because they're so fucking complicated and women don't even try. Help us as games master. We're stuck on level one. We don't think up and down, left, right, A and start together will work. Best regards. Is It's a reference of like the cheat code trying to unlock yeah. the girls. Um, well, firstly, lads, no, I don't think and lack of sex. I remember when you had your um, what, privacy cover and your swipe code and anyway, carry on. <laughs> What has that got to do with this cover? I had a privacy cover because I ordered a screen protector and they sent oh, a privacy they, oh, one. <laughs> listen to the lies. It's not, they did. It's public now, now that everybody they gets did. to listen they to did. the They did, they did, they did. It was an accident. Yeah, Fuck. 
Um, no, I, I think firstly, like, I that, when I stumbled, on it, I <laughs> tripped up and fell on a dick. No, um, there's there was no there is no um, link. I think between that. I think that we talked about this on the last episode. There is kind of a, a huge stereotype out there that men want more sex than women. I think Chloe talked about it last time um, and kind of dispelled that a little bit. I think that um, you know, look, it's, it's not an easy thing to to, to, to fix. Um, I think that men often when they have kids and relationships, you know, they forget that their wives are looking after the kids all day long and that, um, you know, they probably need to do more to try to, you know, encourage the relationship. Instead of like bitching about it on the golf course, you know, when was the last time you texted your wife saying that you were attractive? When was the last time you, you got a nanny to look after the kids and took her just out on a date night? When, was, when did you last take her for away for a weekend? I think there's a bit more science to it. You know, it's interesting I talk to my gay friends, um, especially men and I always say to them quite envious of the fact that you know you could just go up to another man and go all right mate you're like yeah right mate you're like if you're fit you're like you're fit yeah fancy yeah yeah that's that's you know and they, they joke and say it's as simple as it's as simple as that often um with women it's a very different case of affairs you know men you, you know women need more things to start their engine yes sometimes they just uh, you know have the desire to do it but I think it is it is interesting um I know there was a part you know what is the acceptable level during the week? I mean, I personally think you know two or three times a week would be pretty pretty good. You know, pretty comfortable with. Um, I think lives and, and stuff get in the way with kids. You know, I don't know. Maybe you know, maybe twice a week, once a week. But I talked to someone the other day, and they were saying that you know some people go months and months and months without having it. But I'm always a big believer in anything in life is looking at your side of the street and you go, are you really helping to make the situation work? Are you really helping trying to invest in in your relationship? Are you doing everything to help your wife? And the answer is, if you're not, then no. And then the male suicide rate, the reason the male suicide rate is up is because men don't talk about their problems. Men don't reach out to people. Men have this whole concept of, you know, when you've got little kids, right, and you have a, a boy and a girl and a little boy falls over, the dad goes... Don't cry, don't get up, don't show the emotion. Come on, you're a big, strong boy. If a girl falls over, the dad comes over, gives it a hug and says you're okay. Yeah. You know, it's ingrained in us from an early age not to address those issues. So that's why. It's not because things dip. And the last bit was about the testosterone. Yes, men have a testosterone dip. There's a great book called The Ageless Man. Um, you know, people do talk about... Uh, that over a certain age, your testosterone level diminishes, it affects your sex life, affects your mental health, affects your hair, affects everything. And if you've got real concerns about it, go and see, go and see a doctor or a specialist, get tested. And if you need a top up, an endocrinologist, get a top up and see whether you need to do it. Because in America, it's a, it's a massive thing. Over here, it's not so much. But just as the women go through menopause, men go through a form of menopause. So there is something to look at in, in, in all those areas. Um. Yeah, we did actually touch on this already. Uh, acceptable levels during the week is completely um, dependent on the individual and or the couple. So James would probably be happy with like twice a week. Three times a week, I think. Yeah, I mean, I would probably like more than that. Yeah. But that's because I have a higher sex drive. Um, do I think that the uh, reduction in sex, especially for men, has an impact on mental health? Um, if if it does, which it might, I'm sure that it's um, quite surface in terms of your pride, maybe being a little bit bruised, your belief in, in your relationship, maybe being a little bit bruised. I don't think it would really go um, deeper than that. And I don't don't think there's a link between that and male suicide whatsoever, if I'm honest. Um, women go on about their bodies and hormones. However, do you think we try that women try to understand men, especially testosterone? Yeah, I think you'd be surprised how many girls dinners and girls weekends I've had where somebody's been complaining about their partner much as you're doing on the golf course and the conversation will eventually culminate in well that's just men that's just men that's just men um you know we know that you're different and especially testosterone we know especially me because of what I do it's kind of my job to know what testosterone does to a man um in terms of decision making and drive and impulse and I definitely understand um that most men just want to have a lot of sex and find can find monogamy harder for that reason. But it, again, it doesn't apply to all men. You came to the conclusion that men understand women, want to understand women, but you can't because we're so fucking complicated. We're not complicated, we're just more emotional. So things that don't mean anything to you, you probably don't understand why, but just you should just understand that they do mean things to us. It's that simple. Women don't even try. Again, not true. Like I've I've spoken to my friends about issues with James and they've been like, I think you're being a bit hard on him and that he's just a man. So, yeah. Um, 
A victim, they say that. <laughs> yeah, look, I think, look, ultimately we all come back around to the same point, which is that relationships take hard work. And the reason that they take hard work is because it's two completely different people, not only in terms of gender and hormones and the way that they see the world, but two completely different people in terms of just being different humans trying to have one singular life together as a couple. And there's a lot of headbutting that goes on and it can be really, really hard. But, you know, the trick is to kind of talk to each other, communicate to each other, accept that you're both different every step along the way and try to make each other happy. And that in turn should make you you yourself happy, I think. And I do think what, what I said as well in my answer, you know, it does boil down to, you know, women need more, more often than not, um, need more to get into bed than just going, want to fuck, babe? You know, and just trying to do it. it. You can't, you know, men think differently in, in those cases. There's much more emotional connection sex on the whole for women, I find. You know, it, you know, it, you know, women often won't sleep with a man unless there's, unless they've got, you know, I know they do, <laughs> but I've, I've, I've felt conversations I've had where, you know, it's a physical act for a man. They can't think clearly. They want to just go and do it. You know, for, for a woman, the act of penetration, I it's more of an emotional thing, or so I've been told. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's the act of penetration. Okay. I think it's that, although that might be true in the beginning, initially, like to actually let somebody That's what I mean. I'm talking about initial. Like I'm talking initial. about in a relationship. Yeah, I, but I just meant in general, it's oh, yeah. harder to get a, a you know, woman in bed than it would, you know, than, for example, getting a man in bed. If you walked out of here and walked up to someone and went, it's Do you want a bit, mate? A bit. Do you want a bit? It'd be two seconds. If I went out there and go, Want a bit, someone would call the police. Well, yeah, but I would also say, <laughs> mm. I think also if if you're if you if you don't speak to your partner that well and if you say things like you're always banging on about your fucking hormones like you did in the email or um you know you don't make an effort to understand me and I'm trying to understand you but women are also fucking complicated. These things, I'm sorry to tell you, are quite disrespectful things to say to a woman. They're quite sexist things to say to a woman. And shock horror, when you talk to a woman like that, she will shut down. She will sexually shut down from you. I know the times where I've actually managed to go, you know, periods of time without even coming on to you at any point has been because he said or done something that's made me be like, whoa, you way crossed the boundary there. And then I literally, like, the thought of having sex with him is like, I mean, it's just not going to happen. Um, Which is surprising, because I am a cat. And unfortunately for you guys, you then get angry that you're not getting it, and then you lash out even more, and the cycle continues. But this is where communication is really genuinely so important to the health and the, the survival of a relationship. You need to say, okay, look, I said something, and you're obviously pissed off, or we went through a bad week of arguing, and clearly like it's affected our sex life I'd like to get it back on track how do we get past this and that communication has to open up and you have to let her be angry and say like you keep talking to me in a manner that I just don't find attractive or whatever it might be and then you can rebuild from there but um it's what Dyson Zoe was saying last week you're never gonna you're never gonna flip it if you don't like it without communication but I like the fact that they were on the golf course you can imagine they had a few beers and that's what and you know they're all killing themselves because they can't get a shag I can imagine that would be the conclusion <laughs> yeah. after all that eight or nine holes I'm learning men are actually very dramatic creatures yes as i get older i'm like whoa the drama here and yeah, i we're and never be as dramatic as women but we are quite dramatic. i disagree <laughs> shock okay next one okay okay um hi both uh, i've just i've listened to your podcast from the start now and the one thing that amazes me is your relationship the trust and openness you both share it's something i've always wanted to have which leads me into the question which i find difficult to talk about so i decided to disclose on a national podcast instead <laughs> great mm. work uh, I'm a relationship type of guy, always have been. I love being with someone and sharing that love and connection with someone else. But one thing that ruins it every time, my biggest fault is that I doubt myself. I doubt that I've ever been, I'm ever good enough and that she'll always f find someone better. And so every time my partners in the past have spoken with other guys or looked over at other guys or whatever it is, I felt inadequate and end up overthinking it and getting really anxious and upset a lot of the time and end up arguing and even breaking up. I've never been possessive or told girlfriends that they can't do something or whatever, but instead just shut, shut myself up and shut myself off uh, because I fear I'll get hurt, which I have been in the past before. So my question is, what advice can you give me to deal with the emotions, to stop pushing my partner away and being comfortable with her speaking with other guys because ultimately I want a healthy and, op and open relationship with trust, which I just don't have. Thank you. You answer that first. Um, well, first of all, I would say it's really normal to be um, an insecure person because everybody is an insecure person. And second of all, I would say... There's a, I would say that it's your end of this. It's your it's your side of the street to to keep clean. If you can't handle your partner talking to a member of the opposite sex, like that is really controlling, and that's not 
quote unquote normal like in society it's just not normal so you have to this is something you have to work on with yourself and your insecurities and maybe just speak to a therapist about these feelings that you're having because I guarantee it's stemming from some trauma that you've had from way back when um, and that's why you're freaking out um the second thing I would say is, however, that all being said, if somebody, if a partner were to give you a reason not to trust them, that's their side of the street that they didn't keep clean and you shouldn't feel bad for feeling insecure. If I had to venture a guess, and I might be completely off off here, but I would guess that that might have happened to you before and that's what you're holding on to. Um, so maybe just speak to a therapist about how to A, kind of digest what has happened, whatever it might be, and then B, kind of implement behaviors that will help you in the future not freak out and not have an anxiety attack. Um, yeah, but I will say that, you know, if somebody does give you a genuine reason not to worry, then I don't think that you should you should be too hard on yourself, although it sounds to me like you need to do a little bit of work on, on yourself. Look, I, I think there's a couple of points here. I said, firstly, you know, I'm very comfortable with 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 Chloe. I, I you know I am, you know I do get jealous like everybody gets jealous, but I don't. You do not. No, I do not in an active way, but of course I do. You know, of course I I'm not. You know, I I, I love my wife. I love you. Um, oh, sorry, you are the same people. <laughs> I don't have another wife and you. Um, you not, wish. Not, not this weekend, anyway. Um, and I. You know, but I, for example, you know, we've got some friends, some of them are quite touchy feely. Yeah. You know, you'll go and sit on guys' apps, you'll talk to people. You know, you're. I don't, but you keep saying that. I cannot remember the last man's lap I sat on. I, I've, got a, I've got a diary with notes and a PDF. I just, I just don't think that's true. Right, I, fine. You're very flirty. I am very, very flirty. I'm, I'm like tactile. Fine, yeah. very tactile and flirty. Yeah, just read a whole bag into it, right? But I don't get stressed about it because I, you know, I know you and I love you, but I also came to inclusion very early on after having you know, uh, cheating myself, but also been cheating on a number of times. Um, some I had to read about in the paper, some I hadn't. Um, and I basically realised that, you know, you, you can spend your whole life worrying about what someone is going to do to you and that someone's going to, you know, and that you can spend your whole time going through a phone, looking at their property, trying to control them, freaking out every time they talk to someone else. But ultimately, people are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. And uh, I think once you come to that conclusion, the pressure just comes off you. You can only be the best version of yourself. And if someone decides to let you down or someone decides to cross a line, that's a reflection on them, not you, unless you are treating them badly. And again, it takes some um, self-reflection to understand that. But if you're the best version of yourself, if you're kind, loving, supportive, you know, if every time your partner talks to another man, then, you know, uh, and you freak out, you're just gonna, you're just making a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to push her further away or push him further away. So I think you need to come to that conclusion. Chloe mentioned going to speaking to a therapist. I think that's a really important idea to get to get some help with those ideas, those things, and kind of address it. I also think as well, you know, you should, the men she's talking to, you know, do you fundamentally trust them? You know, I'm I come from a very male orientated background. I've seen some bit, things that go on that probably shouldn't have gone on. You know, am I overly trusting with men? No, but I trust my wife, and of all, all the reasons I've just said, I kind of you know, we'll, we'll let things unfold to a certain degree, but I've never had to step in. I've got a really, you know, I've got a very good friend of mine who who is much more fiery than me, that, that has a much more clearer boundary. Um, you know, I'd rather not cause a scene for, for no reason. But ultimately, as I said, you can't control how people act. And if you try to do that, you live a very miserable, insular life that ultimately breeds this trust in the relationship. You spend your whole life worrying about what your partner's going to do. You never live your own life. Yeah. Do you want to read the next question? Oh, you got anything else on that? No, I agree with that. Um, For the first time ever. But then, okay, hypothetically, what what did you do? You talked about having been cheated on in the yes. past. So how did you rebuild the trust from there? Because because the the parallel there is this guy needs to learn to trust. You genuinely had been cheated on, yes. as I'm sure we've all experienced with a partner. How did you rebuild trust from that point? Um, because I would go as far as to say that you buried just head in the sun and pretended it never happened. <laughs> I think, look, there is, a, there is an element of that. I think that, you know, when somebody says, uh, I, you know, when someone says, I'm sorry, and is contrite and, and apologises and goes through everything, you have a decision to make. You can either forgive them, um, uh, but you don't really forgive them and sort of drag the whole situation. Or if you say you're going to forgive them, you sort of have to switch off certain things and go, I'm going to trust this person. Because... 
it's very hard to do, and I think you're probably right. I did probably bury my head in the sand in, on certain aspects because because you chose to stay. Because I chose to stay, and yeah. I think if you choose to stay, but then do you feel like you had some issues left over from that? I think yeah, look, I think every look, I think if you don't address anything or just bury your head in the sand with anything, you're always going to have leftover bits and pieces that checks in the to, post. Is checks, what yeah, my friend calls it, which I love. But but I also think you know it's very hard, but people do make it through. Like you, you're a ver- you you're an avid reader of that psychologist, the woman. What's she called? Oh, Esther Perel. Esther Perel, for people who love and relationship. Esther Perel, you know, and sometimes talking out as a couple, addressing things, you know, understanding why a person cheat, cheated in the first place. If someone actually addresses it, makes it better, you can then move forward from that. Uh, okay, so know. let me ask you a question. So I haven't, you know this story already, yeah. but this I think will be quite helpful for some listeners. So I had an ex who cheated on me. Yeah. You know, you know the story. Yeah. And... I decided to stay because I'm a big believer in like people fuck up and they make mistakes. And, you know, I think you should always give somebody a chance after making a mistake. That doesn't apply to multiple mistakes, by the way. But anyway, and um, and chose to stand it there. But then every time we'd argue, he would bring it up and say that he didn't regret it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So then so then and I the relationship ended up falling apart because trust was just like irreparably broken. Yeah. So. How would you then repair that? Like, how do you, how, if, like, how do you, it's very hard to regain trust, I think, if you've had it broken in the past or if if it's been broken in the relationship. So you can't ever control someone else's behaviour. You can only look at yourself and go, what, you know, what, what am I doing? So was I trusting? Was I giving? Was I doing everything I could do? Had I actually forgiven him? Had I, whatever those things, because... You know, if you try to project as to why there's person acting like that, you know, if the person's just an arsehole and just kept volunteering that for no reason, mm. that's one thing. Everybody has to keep their side of the street clean or take responsibility. Just um, before we go to answer the last question, if you want to get your question answered on our podcast, we've got we're gonna get some experts in. We've had um, we've had Emma Sale in from Killing Kittens. We've had some celeb couples on. We're gonna get some more experts in. But if you send your questions to CQ Questions at CQ Questions at James Haskell. Dot org. That's jameshaskell.org and we will read them out and answer them. They're anonymous, so don't panic. We won't read your names out unless you desperately want us to. Um, and we're going to yeah, keep keep exploring different areas of relationships, love, sex, um, and just try to dispel this whole nonsense about couple goals. People talk about Chloe and I being couple goals, but you know we, we just want to give people honest honest feedback and give us a view from a man's point of view and a woman's point of view. And we, we sometimes come together and sometimes we don't. Yeah. Um, okay, this is a good one for James to answer. Hi, James and Chloe. One thing I've always worried about and could use some advice on is going into my first long-term relationship. I'm in my late 20s now, and I've been on and off Tinder and other dating apps meeting a few people, but never really gone out more than a few times. I have never been in what I would call a relationship, and now I just worry that I do not have the experience of what is needed of me. Oh, <laughs> the few girls I posed this to, uh, it was an instant turn off the idea that I had never been in a long relationship before. Should I just keep it to myself and just try to keep things going? Thank you for all of your podcasts, Jed. I love the name Jed. Um, I mean, firstly, I don't think if you're late 20s, you haven't been in a relationship. I'm not sure you need to volunteer that to, to, to women. I think honesty is, is, is key, but... You know, people are very judgy, um, and I think it's probably something you just need to keep to keep to yourself. I think not having uh, had a relationship actually is probably quite a good thing because you haven't picked up any bad habits. You don't have any preconceptions of what a relationship should be. Um, I think you can go into it really open minded. You haven't probably been burnt potentially, um, and I think that. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it can be seen as a real positive, uh, and, and that's why you should think of it. As I said, I necessarily wouldn't share it with people. Um, but I think you shouldn't be scared of going into a relationship because nobody knows how to have a relationship. There's no guide to having a relationship. Um, you know, you, you feel your way out. I think there's some cornerstones of, of a relationship which are really important, which, firstly, communication, fun, um, you know, a, a balance. So, you know, you, you should always look at a relationship and see, is your life better with that person than without them? The reason I marry Chloe is my life is always better with her than without her. <laughs> Raising her eyebrows. Um, it is. It is true. Um, and that makes a really big difference to me. So I think... Um, trust? Yeah, trust. Oh, sorry, trust is a really important one as well. <laughs> That's what I fucking mean. I forgot the trust. She's like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think those are really simple uh, building blocks and foundations for a relationship. I think just go into open mind and be excited if you meet the right persons. I don't also don't look for relationship. You know, people always fuck up when they look for a relationship. 
be the best version of yourself. Get your stuff on lockdown, and then before you know it, a girl will come come you know come across will be right, and you'll go and have a thing, and stuff will organically develop. But there is no rule book. There is no right and wrong. Uh, you just well, there is certain wrongs, but you just need to to ha- to have confidence and go into it. I think. Yeah, um, I don't think I I would not be put off dating a guy if he hadn't had a serious relationship in his late twenties. I would definitely question it privately to myself. I would you know it's the kind of thing I would just sit in the bath and think about for a few minutes and be like hmm that's interesting um but it wouldn't make me not see you anymore um and I find that to be honest from if I were you I would find that quite off-putting that a woman would be like no not interested like that's a bit unfair um the second thing I would say is the only I look back on my first relationship I fell madly in love with someone when I was 16 and I was with him for five years and I compare it to my marriage now and there are two differences two big differences here one um he's happy rude um one (laughs) what are you doing it's probably a funny face sorry yeah um one i am not as quick to to argue or lose my temper because i think a i'm not a teenager anymore and i don't have that um I don't know, I guess that kind of volatile nature like I used to have. So like more, I'm more open to having like a calm, communicative conversation now. And two, um, I'm not so scared of it ending because it, I've had relationships that have ended, relationships that I really didn't want to end and they did. And that was really painful. And relationships that I did want to end and they did. And that was also pretty painful from a different perspective of like guilt and whatever. Um, other than that, everything's the same. You fall in love, you 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 know, you may be a little bit jealous at first, that will probably wear off after a period of time. Um, you have, you know, your first argument, which is horrifying, and then that feeling of horror wears off after a period of time. You learn somebody else, and, and, and it always just kind of, like James said, it will feel its way out. There's no rule book to this kind of thing. And, you know, yeah, I, I've, I think it should be just as off-putting to you that they'd find that off-putting. If that makes sense. Agreed. But with a name like Jed, I imagine he's been locked on a farm for like his entire life and he's just ventured into the big city. All right, everybody. My hairdresser's called Jed and he's London and fabulous. Yeah, that's quite a fashion name. And he probably wears like a, rides around on a fixie bike with his nan's jumper on and a pair of like black rimmed glasses and an sh- absolute schlick lid. Who, my Jed? Yeah. He does have a schlick lid. Yeah. He's salt and pepper and got beautiful blue eyes. Perfect. And if I was a gay man, he would be top of my list. Excellent. Well, look, that's all we've got time for this week on Couples Quarantine. That's episode. Episode nine. Uh, I'm James Haskell. I'm Claire Newley. If you want to give us a follow, please do on Instagram at uh, Couples Quarantine Pod. We're also on Twitter as well, Couple, uh, Couples Quarantine Pod. Give Chloe a follow uh, on her Instagram, which is Maidy Chloe, um, and mine, which is at James Haskell. We will be back next week. I'm not sure we've got a guest. We'll find that out. If you want to submit your questions, then do to CQ Questions at JamesHaskell.org. Anything to finish with, babe? No. Love you. Love you.